Yeah. You knew what? Um, so we oh, do right. actually have an application uh, for our for our Just hold on there. for our chair uh, positions, and all you really have to do is like mm, I don't I don't know. Like you can email the secretary email, and I will shoot you the document, and you can print it off, fill it out, and give it back to us. In fact, right now that would probably be the best way to do it. Uh, just email either like that you're you know interested. Just write up on the board. Just, just talk to us after also. <laughs> Yeah, or just, yeah. <laughs> you can do both. Um, just for any of you who don't know the secretary email. Um, but yeah, you can just email me and say, like, hey, I'm interested. And then I'll reply with a, a attachment, which is the thing. And you print it off, you fill it out, and you give it back to me. Yeah. yeah. Can I say that? Yeah. 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 So if you guys are interested, you can either email this or speak to us after the club. Sound good? We're all on the same page? Okay, now we can talk about what the part that you guys actually give a shit about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Huh? Okay. Yeah, no. Um, did I send this to you? Or no, this was supposed to be his. Yep, okay. All right, so many of you guys probably heard this at Club Fest, but we haven't told many of our veteran members yet. Um, we kind of have a two day setup this semester. So, every Monday we have this. You see you guys, look, look at everybody's faces, look around, see everybody around here. This is going to be, well, until we weed the noobs of you guys out. Uh, this will pretty much be you guys see at the general meetings. Um, these, uh, these general meetings are a time for us to teach you the abstract parts of game design, such as level design, uh, game analysis, how to think like a game designer, pretty much. But also, they're more fun. I mean, they're general meetings. You guys can invite anybody. You guys can bring along friends. You can do whatever. Now, um, if you guys are more interested in just making games, we have open lab hours on Saturday from 12 to 2. Um, right now, the Game Development Lab in Pearson, that's what GDL stands for, Game Development Lab, uh, down in Pearson 0141, we just got all brand new updated computers. These computers are top of the line. We're talking dual 1080s, 32 gigabytes of RAM, i7s, top of the line motherboards. These things are the cream of the crop and we are opening them up to you guys to use. Many of you guys, if you guys can make a game that needs two 1080s, I'll probably, you know, you know what, we'll, we'll make this bet. If anybody can make a game that can use both 1080s in one single computer, I will pay you $50. Quantum. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> huh? If you can make a Pong game that requires two 1080s, uh, yes, that, is, that meets the criteria. <laughs> yeah, requires. There can't be like minimum specs. Um, but real talk, yeah. So these computers are really top of the line, and we are opening them up to you guys to use. Um, there are li there are limited space. I think there's only about twelve or eleven computers. He says ten. I think there's twelve. Um, but there's some amount of laptop uh, of computers. But you guys are free to bring your laptops. We highly recommend you install Unity if you guys are going to make games on your laptop because that's kind of what we teach. And so um, yeah, they're really really great and. Uh, that's kind of our club setup right now. It used to be really more convoluted, but I think we've got it pretty simple now. All right, Ryan, why don't you pick this up? Sure. So, as you can see by this amazing <laughs> slide that Zach has made, we have events. We have events, yes. Um, as you can see, we have game jams, pitch jams, and social nights, or Socha night. You know. oh, did I forget the L? No, no it's, it's just, just, it's just cut, cut off. off. Oh. It's just cut off. Oh, God. <laughs> he d he's done that before. Um, so these events will kind of happen out throughout the semester and throughout next semester, and they're just kind of the small events that we do. For those that don't know, a game jam is when you have 48 hours to make a game. You can sleep, but that's just wasting your time. Um, we do recommend you shower, though, and eat and breathe and stuff like that. Um, but it's really fun because you have a great game, or not really a great game, a quick and easy game that you can play at the end of it, and everyone else makes a great a game also, and you can kind of compare and be like, oh yeah, that's really cool that you did in 48 hours, and then you show your friends and family like, wow, you made a game, that's so awesome, yeah. My parents never got that into it. <laughs> so. um, a pitch jam, on the other hand, is a game jam, okay, back to a game jam, you actually make the game. A pitch jam is kind of let your ideas flow. This is when you kind of 
create the game through like just like a Word document. This is where you come up with the idea for your game. This is who your character is going to be, what your levels are going to be like, and what's the whole point of your game. And then what you do is actually come up in front of the club and actually pitch this idea to other people. And then if your idea is good enough, you might actually get some programmers, artists, musicians, et cetera, to actually work on this game with you. That's the whole point of the pitch jam is so you can get your ideas out there and get people working on your game. Social nights are exactly what they are. They're nights where you are social. Um, this is also, I guess you could say, a social night. But specifically, our social nights are kind of fun because we'll bring some games, board games, rock bands. There'll be food, yep. I believe, um, which is great because of who doesn't love food? Um, that's all I got for that. I don't love food. Well, I'll have your slice then. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, yes, you do. Um, also, this year, we've got some other big events planned. Um, Extra Life, for those that don't know, is just kind of 24. 24 hour uh, charity stream where you basically play video games for a good cause. Um, not really much to be said about that. It's a good cause, play video um, games. Do many of you guys know the Games Done Quick uh, like marathon stream and charity event? Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be setting up one very similar to that. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be setting up one very similar to that with all the game development and like video game related clubs on campus, uh, including Extra Life. And then we're going to have one massive stream with like a streamer couch. We're going to have uh, events such as like a two-handed one controller uh, Smash Brothers tournament, <laughs> and like um, bring your parents to play Dark Souls, and like a couple <laughs> different events like that, um, where we're just going to stream them. People are going to be on the couch having a good time and trying to raise money for this seriously amazing cause. Thanks, Zach. Yeah. As for Global Game Jam, it's just like any other game jam, except it's global, which means that we have the entire world in one room. No, we don't. Asterisk. We don't do that. <laughs> asterisks. Asterisks. Um, this one's also kind of cool. This one's more widespread, so we can actually set up like a jam site, let's say, and then we can actually have people from the surrounding area to actually come in. So it's a bit bigger game jam. There'll be more games out of it. We don't actually have to come up with our own theme, which is great because we are terrible at that. Um, and then you can kind of see games across the world that have also done this kind of same theme. So you can kind of see what other people and pretty much other like countries even are doing with their game development. So that's pretty cool. And then finally, we have Indus Speak, which stands for Industry Speaker. Um, so last year, uh, who, is, who has seen extra credits on YouTube? All right. That's a lot, actually. There should be more of you guys. I mean, that's still a lot. Um, so extra credits is basically just this YouTube series that talks about like a different uh, part of game design, let's say. Um, give me an example. Uh, the psychology of horror. Like that. <laughs> and um, they do these quick, like short, like six minute videos, and they're really good, and I would definitely recommend watching it. But the reason why this is on this slide is because the lead writer for that, James Portnow, we actually got to talk here last spring, and we got a crowd of, what, 300, 400 people, let's say. You weren't there, it doesn't matter, there's a lot of people. Um, and then the year before that, we got another one, uh, Keith Fuller, another game consultant to kind of give his take on the industry, how to get in the industry, stuff like that. So these really cool educational talks, if you're in English 150 or 250, it counts as a lecture, which is even better, because you're kind of required to go for that for class. And this year, we're also thinking of getting another speaker for that kind of thing. We don't know who yet, so if you guys have any don't know who yet. about people, we'd love to hear them. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's it for events, I believe. Yeah. Awesome, I guessed okay. correctly. So now, um, now we're actually going to, okay. Sorry about the awkward pass off there, guys. It was Ryan's fault. Um, okay, so now we're actually going to have some fun and actually do something related to game development because we've been lecturing you guys literally for like, what is it? The past, oh, it's only been 14 minutes? Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you pass on the speaking to others. It's because it is here. <laughs> All right. Normally, I, I've been known to be a bit long-winded, let's just say. So, okay. So, we're actually going to have some fun. Um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to number you guys off uh, one through... How many people are in this room right now? Yeah, Did you count? At least 50. At least 50. We'll, do, we'll do five. <laughs> we'll do five groups of... Well, we'll do... So, count off by tens. We'll do five different teams. Or ten different teams. There we go. We'll do different teams. Um, so, we are about to introduce to you guys to one of... Fuck! <laughs> we got that on video, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <coughs> so, um, <laughs> so we are going to introduce you to one of our favorite like events that we love to do with you guys. This is known as the Fuzzy Pickles Challenge. 
We break you guys into groups of, we're going to break you guys into 10 different teams. And this is going to be a great chance for you guys to just talk about who you guys are and everything like that. We're going to reveal to you a very secret theme that we have been brewing for years and years and years. And by years and years and years, I mean Brittany just came up with it. And um, we are going to, uh, then you guys, the entire point of this is to spend 10 minutes coming up with a game idea as fun and as silly or as ridiculous as you want. Hell, if you want to find a way to turn it into a video game console, go right ahead. Um, and we will, um, then you guys will just kind of, we'll go around the room telling each team's thing. Does that kind of make sense? It's a pretty simple concept. The idea is just brainstorm a stupid game. <laughs> We've had some really great stupid games. <laughs> All right, so let's just count off starting with you and then we'll go to 10. <laughs> what? Okay. Oh, did we get this row? We did? Okay. So continue. No, you're 10. Yeah, you're four. Wow, do we skip people? Oh, you guys, I was counting on you. I was just going over my voices that I heard. <laughs> oh, there are. They're all messed up. Okay, yeah, just count ten and then one. Sound good? You're ten. You're one. Whatever. You guys roughly know who you are. Uh, split into your groups. We'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. that we chose you guys in, either one, like one through ten. What we're gonna do is just have one of you guys stand up, uh, describe your game, and hopefully have a good laugh or chuckle or... There's a third adjective somewhere I can think of, but I'm not gonna. Um, and so yeah, make sense? Sound good? Bad. No, it's not competition. We're doing it for fun. This is also for fun. Alright, so you guys are group one. Everybody, group one after four. <laughs> okay, so the name, the name Seven Deadly Sins, and basically the effect of the, or the concept of the game is uh, there's seven sins um, that each person, uh, there's a sin that each person has done, and if you uh, if you kill all seven of those, um, I guess I should say the the goal of the game is to avenge Harambe's death. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you're able to pass each level, um, which is each person is assigned a sin. 
uh, you'll get to the last level, which will be the main boss, which then you'll verse uh, Harambe's killer. Um, and so we'll be assigned to each boss to the uh, each sin um, based on like, how they perform and how the level goes. Uh, so la uh, last, that was a little difficult one to come up with. Uh, but I guess we base it probably on uh, um, Dante's Inferno game, where apparently there's just sex noises on the drum kind of thing. So it kind of has to be distractions, I guess. Um, um, for greed, the boss will um, kind of a life steals and it hits you. He'll steal your have health slot. It's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a slow monster, um, but it does a lot of damage. Uh, MP, um, <coughs> what do we do for MP again? Oh yeah, it kind of like mimics your skills uh, um, and attacks against you. Uh, Wrath, the lower health it has, the more damage uh, it, it has. Um, Ubri is there's certain milestones like 50%, 25% health left, uh, where it kind of separates into um, into more of its, uh, itself. And uh, gluttony is what have you found? Yeah, yeah it helps it just heal itself from eating. Cool. All right. Ours is also Summon Deadly Sins, but wait, but wait, it's, it's kind of original, um, it's like actually like a pet based thing, and so your, your pet will have, it will develop either sins or virtues over the course of, of the game, like you know, you can feed different items or something like that, um, or like you know, different, do different activities with it, you need to maintain this sort of balance, because if you, if you overdo something to try and give a pet a virtue, you can end up giving it a sin, so like, if you try and make the, the pet very, like, I'm not sure how this would work, but this is the first thing that came up, is uh, you try and make your pet very humble, and then he starts becoming proud of how humble he is. Um, <laughs> gets canceled out. Um, but then, like, so the, the endings of the game basically are, you know, if you get your pet, you know, all seven uh, virtues, then... Um, then your pet like becomes like the second coming of the Messiah, and then uh, if you get you know, seven sins, then he becomes the Antichrist. Um, and then there's a, there's a secret third ending where if you maintain like sort of perfect balance, uh, he becomes a tax accountant and uh, <laughs> lives a normal life. Um, and then kind of the final thing we were talking about was like with the Adams and stuff like that. You have like two different shopkeepers. Um, one of them's like this guy in this nicely dressed suit. He's like. He seems really sinister, but then like turns out to be actually this really nice guy. And so you, then you see this like you know like hobo who's speaking like words of wisdom and everything like that. And he turns out to be just maliciously evil. Um, so that was like plot twist type things. <laughs> oh, uh, we're gonna. I think we're trying to decide between pet catholicism or cat catholicism. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Alright, group number three, you do have the floor. Alright, we made the same game. <laughs> <laughs> I, at least title wise. Um, we were thinking more along the lines of a card game. Um, uh, our, the way the cards would be distributed between the players would be based on the sin that they got assigned. And so you can have up to seven players. And the cards that you get have special powers and special abilities and whatnot based on that sin that you pick. Now, the goal of the game, we didn't decide upon. We were still arguing about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stay tuned if you want to learn more. It'll be a blog post update. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll give a round of applause. Yeah, so we're, we're very well planned because we just now decided who's, who's going to get this presentation. Uh, we have a dungeon crawler. It's crawl through a dungeon. You don't actually literally call you run around. Um, can, can I crawl though? Huh? Can I crawl? It's the well, most yeah, important feature of any given game. We <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I thought um, that was jumping. No. So it's it's a dungeon color, it has seven dungeons. No idea where we got that number from. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so every every dungeon would be based on one of the deadly sins. Um, essentially, it's sort of like there's a boss at the end of each dungeon, and like that dungeon is essentially their domain. Um, we didn't actually really discuss the specifics of any particular dungeon, uh, but essentially, what every dungeon would have its own gimmick, and that gimmick would somehow play into the boss. So 
throughout the duration of each dungeon, the player is being trained on certain skills that come into play in the boss battle. And then at the end of the entire game, there's a fight against Satan, which is just like an amalgamation of all seven of the bosses at once. Cool. For two questions, who has ever played on Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive? Yeah. Has anyone ever heard of the game called Agony? It's a new game that's... No, no? Okay. Oh, one person. Oh. <laughs> well, so the game that we want to do, well, it's called The Seven Deadly Sins. Which I think we're going to have like a copyright kind of... <laughs> yeah. The premise of the game is actually a very simple premise. You are supposed to escape through hell. To escape through hell, you are to explore several different areas, but since it's the five, well, uh, it's going to be puzzle-based. So in the HTC Vive, we're also in the Oculus Rift, so you have the whole kind of three-dimensional aspects. And, uh, I didn't even really get that far, did we? Because all, all we really, yeah, all we really got was like, it's supposed to be for the Vive. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of arguments about what to do. But it's supposed to have a lot of horror elements, so I guess when it comes to the I don't know the vibe of you during the pretty eerie because we all have noise and stuff. I don't know what it is. We don't argue. We didn't get very far. We didn't get very far. VR. VR. Yeah, VR. That's VR. 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 You don't need any more details. All you need VR. to know is VR. It will sell. 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 It Number six? Yeah, yeah, so with uh, with our idea, starting off, you know, the idea was starting to start off as like a minor demon type thing. Uh, and you go from town to town, and you have to perform kind of reconnaissance work within that town, listening around to know what the people are like there, um, figure out kind of their vices and virtues, and then with that knowledge, you can kind of gear your manipulation of those people towards a certain seven deadly sin, and try and cause kind of infighting within the town. And then from there you can kind of move around from town to town. And then also it would be like a leveling system to kind of build up your uh, <coughs> stature as a demon, I guess. Um, yeah. That's actually pretty cool. I like that one a lot. Good job. All right. Everybody give me a round of applause. Uh, our game is called The Seven Deadly Ursins. <laughs> 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 um, ours is an RPG where the classes are based on sins. So we have um, Lust, who will be more like the mage of the group, and she will have the abilities uh, Fetish and Seduce. <laughs> um, we have Greed, who doesn't need a weapon, but he gets times two gold, times two EXP, and if the party gets first pick on an item, or if, he, if the party gets an item, he gets first pick. So, um, he also gets pickpocket ability. Uh, Sloth gets 50% 50 50 reduced speed, and takes damage as a damage over time. So he is really he's almost like a semi-tank. Um, gluttony is the tank, and if he enemies, the game is health. He devours them. But if he is not fed, he starts eating the team. <laughs> I'm usually greed first. Um, envy gains one of uh, the other person's abilities per turn, but that person loses that ability. So <laughs> Uh, and then Wrath will get reduced damage and will deal extra damage. And then Pride was too prideful to be in the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the name of our game is actually 10 Steps to Heaven, so we should change it up around here. <laughs> um, we'll have a 2D platformer. Um, it will be on, let's see, everything. I'm beside, even Windows iPhone. Uh, window, Windows Phone, except for Wii U, because we decided no for that. Um, but it would be a 2D platformer, action, adventure. Uh, we would be playing as the Seven Deadly Sins, but like all at once, you're an angry blob. <laughs> so well, you're only one at a time like in the front, and whoever you are, that depends on like what abilities you get. We haven't quite worked out the abilities yet, but we're getting there. And the goal is to kill the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and, as you kill the Ten Commandments, you get like closer to heaven, so like you get like one step closer, and you start out on Earth, so like you're killing people to begin with, and stuff. And then in the end, the goal, the goal is to kill the God Blob, or Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God, and such. 
And that's the goal, is just to take out morality, just take out everything good and stuff. And we try working in a heart-wrenching, a moving story along the way, but uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can get around to that. So. <laughs> So our game is just called Sims, not to be confused with Sims. It's um, a 2D platformer shooter. Uh, everything is random slash procedurally generated. Uh, it has we have random items and like the abilities that you get based off the seven Sims. So like uh, kind of like with the theirs they're talking about with the uh, like abilities that they got. But um, let's see. <coughs> You, so it's kind of like a, you, a car based thing, except you want to do like the worst things to the bosses. And so like every time you sin, like you like pick a boss or that reduces their health, like you sin and uh, kind of go against them and then the bosses are reduced health. Um, the higher level the boss, the better the rewards, and the bosses are also based off the sim, and they're randomly generated, so you keep going through, and each gets harder and harder, and, yeah. Cool. That's a very Binding of isaac -y kind of feel to it. I like it. Alright, and our final group? This is our final group, right? Yeah. yeah. Alright, cool. <clears throat> From Group 10 Studios featuring <laughs> featuring Las Vegas, the Sin Simulator. <laughs> Utilizing Oculus Rift or PSVR, we, you get to personally experience redemption as you explore the city of Las Vegas. You will fight the seven games and help good people <laughs> by solving puzzles to, to, to get power-ups to defeat to defeat the hierarchies of the games and the game bosses getting stronger and stronger in a hunting type game such as Monster Hunter and so on and so forth defeats powerful bosses. <laughs> <laughs> I should have had my note cards. Uh, and, well, yeah, that's basically it's it. VR. It's VR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, like, yeah, the, as like a puzzle to like, or as like a thing to solve puzzles. So oh, the, the puzzles are, are like, themed around just, the dead. Yeah, go. Yeah, so but just the like, <laughs> <laughs> like, Smuzzy is like, so like you get really big, so then you'd like, you know, solve something like a pressure, like button, or like something like you'd float, you know, since you're so big, or like rat, you know, like you'd just be able to like go ballistic on everything and stuff yeah. like that, so. Cool. All right. Alright, so I hope you guys kind of enjoyed that activity. It's just a really fun way of getting you guys thinking about making games and uh, doing all sorts of stuff. Um, but to wrap things up, um, Ryan is going to show off... Okay, his face says maybe not. Um, but if many of you guys were at Club Fest, we maybe mentioned Minicade, or if many of you guys are veterans, you guys remember the framework. Uh, we've kind of released it as a new thing called Minicade. Um, Ryan will show it off potentially. But while Ryan's setting this up, we actually have a message from the old president of the club. Why don't you come on up here? Michael? I want to show you. Uh, so I work at Workiva. We have a little place down in the southwestern part of the city here. Yeah, just gonna ask if you knew about it. Does anybody know who Workiva is? Okay. Uh, they they work at they have a building office at the uh, research park. They do like internships and stuff. They're a real company. It's very awesome. The campus is kind of structured like Facebook and Google. We have our own video game room. We have like a gourmet cafeteria on campus. It's like really, really awesome. Definitely apply for an internship there. Um, but I wanted to show you guys some things. So every January, MIT puts on a competition called Battle Code. Uh, you program in Java, so kind of like top-down strategy, bots. This year they did uh, Zombie Armageddon. And so you program kind of like a factory generator that makes army units and then they go around and fight zombies and the other army team. So the work he was putting on kind of like a JD competition or like a warm up for next year, 2017. They change it every year. Um, but we're going to use uh, what they did for January as our own kind of little, you know, recruitment uh, tournament, but you can win prizes. So 
If you want to go to um, blitzcode.org is where we're structuring it here. Uh, we have our own little we have our own little setup. And if you want to go over here and you can make your own teams, sign up for teams. I'm going to try to put out another email through uh, the game dev email list. A little more instructions on how to get into it, how to set things up. I also want to have a separate meeting for it. Um, but if any of you are interested in killing zombies, comfortable coding in Java or no people that code in Java, and you want to do you know strategy design for them while you make them do the hard work, I mean, <laughs> then uh, definitely uh, go over here and uh, sign up for a team, and I'll be in touch with you guys later. I guess something else I'll show a little bit of what it looks like. Um, the final tournament here in at MIT, we actually got invited, my team won the sprint tournament, uh, but we didn't want to pay the plane tickets. But, uh, <coughs> so this is kind of what it looks like, you know, it's, it's a little bit bad graphics, but I'm kind of running a viewer in VR, so you can actually like walk around and have a little more intuitive stuff, because they've been throwing this on since like 1995, and so they haven't updated the graphics very much. But uh, hopefully someday, and that's something that anybody might want to write, you know, a Vive viewer for the tournament. It's just a lot of zombie killing, a lot of different maps, and uh, it's fun. So, that. <laughs> All right, so yeah, um, just to clarify, this is a really good way for you guys to learn or practice writing um, artificial intelligence for enemies, because that's literally what the competition is. It ends up being AI versus AI. So, it's pretty neat. Okay, thank Ryan. You. Oh yeah, everybody, thank you. Thank you. Game development guys, where you try to um, make something cool. Uh, stress test on yeah. trial by fire, and it doesn't work. You make it cool yourself. Well, Ryan makes it cool himself. Work. Me and Brittany are fine. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> I'm more fine than all the rest of them. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> You guys know how fluorescent lights work? This is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> you can like see the gases coming in and then the actually looked at the fluorescent light. And I think Brittany just noticed that for the first time. That means she's high. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's like usually they're fully functioning, but then sometimes they're not. Oh, I guess, yeah, the little ones in here. Yeah, because it's like it's, it's slowed down. Welcome to our entertainment while we're at this. I appreciate it. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't play it, but trust me when I say it's awesome. Um, <laughs> Take your word for Unity, by the way. Brothers. Yeah, this is Unity, everybody. This is what it looks like behind me. Welcome to your Lord and Savior. What? Um, so, Lord and Savior, Minicade is something that uh, I've been working on. Basically, what we want to be able to do is give you guys hands on experience with making games. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Wait, that's a. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's a truck. And we realize that making games is hard. I still struggle with it. Yep. I never made much. Yeah. And we basically want to give you guys a cool place to get started with making games. So, what better way to do that than with mini A tagline? As I make that up. It was okay. It was okay. It was okay. So, Minicade as a whole is just this giant game that you can kind of relate to Mario Party. Where there's always that big game that kind of is the actual game, but then there's the mini games that kind of make up the whole game. So, okay. So, I went and made the whole game, but I forgot to make the mini games because I'm absent minded like that. And we thought, what better way than to let our club members get some hands on experience than to actually make their own mini games? Now these are just quick 60 second mini games, so they're not meant to be overwhelming. Um, you can look at this one right here and see how there are four capsules for players. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Brian's not an artist. I'm not an artist. Here, we know. Let's look at another one. This is uh, this one's better. In my opinion. It's uh, it's that. 
<laughs> that is the entire game. <laughs> you jump and stuff. So basically, what we did was we made this kind of tool to easily create mini games. And if you had our work space, workspace on last Saturday, then you saw this. I don't think most of you were there, so we'll kind of go through it again. So this is essentially what you do to make mini games. So to get started getting a mini game, all you do is fill out this little box right here. So like your game name, number of players, camera type, this is play type, blah, 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 stuff like that. This is about the majority of the work you're gonna start with making a game. It's very simple to just make a game using this. And Uh, Brian, you are a great salesman. I <laughs> was actually expecting to have some of the back to lean on. Yeah, that's true. So I know that feeling. this is like yeah. Shout out to people who were at my first ever meeting. Yeah, yeah that we don't talk about me. Yes. We're kidding. None of them are here. It's it's like like that. That. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was abysmal. This I didn't say that you're off. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So this is what we'll be doing on Saturdays mostly, is just helping you guys learn how to make mini games. And they're a great way to learn. And I'm just repeating myself. Right? <laughs> yeah, you've been saying uh, and that's all that's it. That's we're gonna it. make games. We're gonna Wait, make games. Majority, I feel like majority of this club is gonna be like, hey, we're gonna use Minicade a lot, and A, we're gonna use Unity a lot, so just know that right now. Um, yeah, those are our primary engines, which I believe I told a lot of you guys at Club Fest. Uh, Unity is our primary engine. Uh, we also have a few sticklers, Tom, who loves Game Maker. So if you guys know Game Maker, Tom's actually kind of our expert on it right now. Um, and it's a really great, he, like I said, kind of our expert. Um, and he is a really great tool just as well. But, expert on the Game Maker. Okay. Oh, oh. So he feels like that. All right. Okay, but uh, just to clarify that, this, uh, if you guys don't know what Unity is, go download Unity. Second thing, this Minicade thing is an asset package. It's just an object that you basically import into the scene and you way can... too much information. And then you can find it on our Stew Org page. Um, we're kind of running out of time, but um, because it is 8.05 or 5 minutes over. But yeah, go check out our Stewart page, go to an FAQ, we can answer any of your guys' questions, email us, do it anyway. Uh, but other than that, go for it, make games, it'll be awesome.